My friends, hello! It is officially the year 2021. I'm recording this six minutes after midnight on New Year's Day. So if you hear any fireworks and stuff going off in the background, that's what's going on. But what better way to ring in the new year than uh, to look at the materials that are best to build stuff out of. So yay, New Year's. All right. Uh, this was totally not planned, but what happened with this and the reason that this video exists is because there was some talk on one of my other videos in a comment about the best materials to use for like insulation and stuff. And I think at some point I have learned it either wrong or two different ways. So the way I typically look at this, let me find something that's actually better. The way I typically look at this is I'll look at the specific heat capacity and the thermal conductivity of something to try to judge what is actually better or worse for uh, heat transfer and whether I want to encourage it or discourage it. And I think rather than trying to estimate or trying to use math or anything like that, I was going through and setting up a bunch of examples like this so I could see it for myself. So I figured if I'm learning this the correct way by just doing science in the game, then I might as well just bring everybody else into the, the conversation as well. And together, we'll just kind of find out what is the best thing to uh, build this stuff out of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put something very hot in each of these squares. And I'm going to hook them up or not. I will either just have them in the, the tiles conduct heat out to some gas on the outskirts here, probably out to some oxygen since that's what's in most of our bases. And I'll put something very hot in here, probably like really hot petroleum. I need to be careful to not melt some of these things because some of these are built out of lead and they have a very low melting point, like 600 degrees. And uh, I am accounting for this on the standpoint of making sure I don't break any machinery because I built all my, all my machinery out of thermium, which if you've never seen this before, it's basically something that just adds a ridiculous amount of heat resistance on this. Uh, so the biggest worry that I have for all of these is going to be metal. Uh, and specifically lead. So I'm gonna probably just spawn like 500 degree petroleum. And yes, this is in Fahrenheit. Uh, oh, I'm so tempted to switch it now, but we'll, we'll switch it at some point, I promise. I'll keep this all just in numbers that are not really that useful. Like all we wanna see is the, the amount that it changes and not necessarily the exact temperature. So all this is going to do is figure out what's the best and worst tiles, what's the best and worst pipes, for either encouraging or discouraging heat. So let's do some science, y'all. Yeehaw. All right. We want to put petroleum in here. Let's just not overfill this either. Let's set this to about 500 degrees Fahrenheit so we don't melt anything. And what I have in here, by the way, before I actually unpause, I'm just going to do this one section at a time to figure out what's better or worse for each thing. Uh, what I have is each one of these is built with a different type of material on the inside. So this one's copper, this one's lead, this one's iron, so on and so forth. And we're going to test literally every option that I have for these. So I'm going to first be testing the uh, metal tiles because those are going to encourage the most heat transfer. And we're going to kind of figure out which one's better or worse for that. I'm going to also test the regular tiles in the exact same way. So I'm just going to go ahead and sample this and fill these. We're going to start them all at the same time so you can see what the difference is between all of the types as well. And uh, we'll do this one and then we'll do the plumbing ones next so that we can just see the raw tiles by themselves. How much heat do they actually push out to something else? Um, yeah, there's going to be something funny later in the video that we'll have to get to, but <laughs> we'll get there. All right, so what I want to do next is I want to grab oxygen and I want to fill this up with some kind of relatable value. So. Two kilograms per tile is about where it maxes out in most people's bases. So this is kind of simulating if I were to have 300 or sorry, 500 degree petroleum uh, in a uh, encased thing like this with metal tiles exposed to my base, how much damage am I going to do to my base by just letting that transfer? You could also think about this the other way. Sometimes you want that heat transfer to happen. Like if this was cold petroleum, for example. The ideas are the same for heating and cooling, so I'm just going to have everything being consistent. We're just going to be seeing how much heat is transferred from one to the other, which should imply uh, that it'll transfer any energy. So like cool or hot should be transferred in the same way. If there was a noise on my mic, sorry about that. I'm like using my hands to talk and knocking into my stand. So I'm going to fill up the rest of these rooms 
And I'm gonna set a timer using a piece of automation to figure out how much it's changing and how quickly it is. And I'll just let it run so we can get an idea of scale on in terms of how much uh, heat is exchanged. And I'm doing it this way rather than doing math because I wanna see some practical examples of like, if I had to insulate something away from the rest of my base, what does that actually mean? And how bad is that gonna be if I choose it to do one way over the other? And I'm hoping to find some stuff that will kind of settle this once and for all. All right, so let's get some automation. I'm gonna set up a timer sensor here just so we can help keep time. I'm gonna set the green duration to like as many seconds as I can possibly get. Uh, and then this will actually know how many seconds have elapsed because it's zero out of 600 right now. The red, whatever, we'll just set it to zero. So we'll be able to tell how much time has passed since I unpause and so we can see how fast the heat transfer happens and I'll just stop it periodically to get an idea of how things are changing. So now that we have this first section set up, which is literally just how do all the tiles interact with ambient air and liquid and stuff like that around them, let's find out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I have this already reset. Let's just go ahead and unpause and see what happens. I have this on pretty slow right now, so you can already see the oxygen around here is getting extremely hot on all these metal tiles. So let's see what the difference is between a bunch of these. And maybe we could try to measure it all from the same point. Or I guess we could just go by like an order of magnitude in terms of what's different. Because this is also a good way to check. Um, a lot of times you can also think about this in the sense of... I'm probably just going to be using the most common tile I have for some of this stuff, so like... The differences between aluminum and, say, uh, lead, for example, I guess if you really want to nitpick and you really want to make sure you're using the most efficient thing, we can check that out. But ultimately, a lot of times, I'm just going to be using what I'm subjected to. And a lot of times for these more advanced things like thermium, I'm probably not going to have that when I'm having this problem. So I'll make sure to mention those as we go. So I'm going to try to just measure from the same tile, which will be this bottom middle tile on each one, and note which one it is. So copper is at 424. Lead is a little bit higher at 469. Iron is at 403, so a little bit slower than the other two, but they're all in the same neighborhood, about 400 degrees. Aluminum is actually insulating decently, but if you're trying to encourage heat transfer, that means aluminum's kind of bad at that. Uh, let's also check out... Oh, did I make aluminum twice? Did I actually make a mistake here? Let's hope that I didn't, because I'll have to go back and do this again. There's five and four. Okay, so this is just duplicate aluminum. Uh, I, there's only nine things we can make this out of, so I'm not too worried about that. So it should go from aluminum to gold, if I did this correctly. Let's check it out. Aluminum, gold. Yeah, and there's only nine, because gold's still on the screen when I see the latter four. So, okay, this is not meant to be here, so we'll, we'll not worry about that one. So, yeah, aluminum is doing a pretty bad job of encouraging heat transfer, which is, I'm gonna call it bad, because I would typically want heat transfer to happen with these tiles. Uh, let's see, gold... About the same as what I've seen before, maybe a little bit better, about the same as iron, or sorry, lead. Tungsten, also about the same, these are almost identical. Steel is a little bit more insulated than the rest of them, about the area where aluminum is, so steel's pretty bad for encouraging heat transfer if you need to uh, encourage a lot. Uh, these are niobium and thermium, I'm barely going to pay attention to these because these are things you can only get from space, so just to look at them. Yeah, nothing crazy there. And if we look at the temperature overlay, if I were just to look at this, I'd be like, eh, they're all about the same. So I think for the metal tiles, if you want to encourage heat transfer, just use whatever you have. And you're not going to get too dramatic of differences. Again, the only other thing to pay attention to here is their melting points. So if you're handling something that's really hot, lead would be terrible for this because it would melt really easily. Whereas something like steel would be really good because this is a really high melting point to the point that you could contain magma and stuff like that inside here. Uh, so I would just say use whatever you want and the biggest difference the biggest difference is going to be the steel that you have. In the meantime, we've only simulated this for 12 seconds. <laughs> so let's see what's happened with our regular tiles. This is already like unacceptably bad to me. If I was trying to insulate this with regular tiles, my base would overheat really quickly, especially with some of these, but this is interesting to me. And we'll talk about this. Uh, this is definitely something that's super duper late game, but it is still kind of interesting. Uh, there's also some other ones that are a little bit interesting, like the ceramic here is doing a great job. But let's look at this. So these are regular tiles, sandstone, this block. Let's actually simulate this for a little bit longer since we're going with sandstone. And while we're at it, let's look at all the insulated ones. Not enough changes happened yet, so I'm not gonna pay attention to these yet. 
Let me simulate this for just a little bit longer. And 20 seconds, by the way, is almost no time at all. I think a full cycle is 300 seconds. So let's stop at 30. This is in one tenth of a cycle, meaning that this is going to happen almost immediately. So if we look at the temperature overlay, most of them are looking pretty bad in terms of how much heat is actually exchanged. So if you want to insulate stuff, regular tiles just don't look like the right option here. Um, except for a couple of special materials, which we'll talk about. So, let's look at these individually, just for the sake of comparison. Sandstone, 186. Igneous Rock, 168. Granite, 177. So thus far, it looks like sandstone's the worst. Igneous Rock is the best. Sedimentary Rock, terrible, 310. This is one of the worst ones, looks like. Which means that I am wrong in some of the videos that I'm talking about, because the thing to think about this is the material determines its some of these properties. And apparently I want high specific heat capacity and low conductivity, which is what that comment was saying. So that comment is definitely correct. And I can't remember where I read about it, but I remember reading a long time ago when I was a noob that uh, using obsidian was one of the best things for insulation, but at least for regular tile, ins uh, obsidian and sedimentary rock are awful. So definitely not going to be recommending using those anymore. Um, and I do feel a little bit justified because for a long time, I was thinking that Igneous Rock was better than most of these ones, which is why Igneous Rock was a little bit more attainable. Uh, and I I got my opinion reversed at some point, and I don't remember why, but yeah, so definitely Igneous Rock is the best of these so far. And these ones are objectively awful. All right, let's keep looking. Fossil, not terrible, but still you want to use your fossil for lime more than often, so yeah, I wouldn't definitely recommend using that. Ceramic is interesting. This is doing an okay job. Uh, by comparison, a little bit better than igneous rock. Ceramic is something you have to manufacture as well, so it makes sense for it to be a good insulator. Mafic rock, pretty terrible. About in the same degree as these other two. These two are interesting, though. This iso resin, doing a pretty good job. And this is a special material that you can make in the late game. Which, if you click on it, it has a thermal conductivity of literally zero. Meaning that it should not conduct any heat at all. No matter what you're doing. Um, and more specifically, that means that it's basically impossible for something to change this thing's temperature uh, if you want to get kind of technical about it. So uh, insulation, if you ever manage to get there, that means you don't need to use insulated tiles anymore. You can just use the regular tiles and it should not exchange any more heat. And pause there for a second, but I think this section is pretty much done. So if you're looking to encourage or discourage this, it looks like if you want to encourage... Uh, sedimentary rock, obsidian are both good options. Mafic rock's also a decent option. If you want to discourage, I wouldn't use any of these except for the insulation, which I don't think I've ever tried to make in a normal run before unless I was doing something really silly because of how expensive it is and how much you just really don't need that uh, unless you're doing like crazy challenges or mods or something like that. So yeah, that's that's the story for that. Let's check out these and see how much these have changed. Some of these have actually lowered just a little bit because of the temperature of the tile, so that's kind of funny. Uh, but let's simulate this on, like, super speed and see if this changes in any meaningful way. And then this will give us a better idea of how it changes over a uh, span of a really long time. So I'm just going to let this run, see if we get any bleeding here. Maybe not. We might need to actually come back to this and figure this out. By the way, we've only ran for... I think this has been maybe two cycles, and these are all all the way red, so definitely terrible. This one actually started breaking through the iso resin, which I didn't realize had such a low melting point. <laughs> so there you go there. Definitely don't want to use that. Uh, but the insulation, still perfect. So there you go. All right, uh, I think I accidentally paused. Let me get out of this view. Let me go ahead and speed it back up. And I don't know if we're just going to sit here and watch this because it may take too long for this to actually start happening. So this, I mean, you can already get an idea of generally how many cycles have passed just based upon our timer here. Oh, we also have the cycles counter here. So I guess we know how much time has passed as well. <laughs> if we need to be less particular about it. But yeah, over the span of a couple cycles, all these insulation options have barely changed, but they will eventually change. Um, so I think I'm going to come back to these. Let's not worry about this right now and let's see what they do later. All right, let's look at some other stuff. Let's look at plumbing. Plumbing is the same idea in the sense that if you let uh, like liquids go through pipes, they will exchange their heat with the things that are around them. So let's do the same thing as we did before with this petroleum. 
Let's fill up these chambers. And let's set it to the same value, 500s on both. I'm gonna go ahead and fill up all of them. They're gonna be able to resist the heat because I did build these out of thermium, which is again, is another very late game resource that you can only get from rocket missions. So I wouldn't worry too much about that unless you're trying to do some crazy advanced stuff. Uh, in general, the best thing to build these things out of uh, with common resources is steel because they can resist all kinds of heat. Uh, but if you don't need them to resist the heat, you might as well save your steel for something else. Oh man, I did not mean to do that. Uh, let's... <laughs> Definitely don't want to fill that one up because that's going to be gas. Definitely getting on autopilot here. Yes, select vacuum. Uh-huh, good job. All right. So, now we have this all hooked up to power. We need to actually put some gas out here, which again, we did this with oxygen. So let's switch back to that really quick. Oxygen. You know, you're always good at typing until someone's watching. As soon as someone's watching, you're just like, oh, I've never typed in my life. All right, let's see what the pipes do with these different fluids. And the pipes are gonna be what's different. So this one's made out of copper, this one's made out of lead, this one's iron, aluminum, gold. Looks like I didn't make the same mistake with the double aluminum here. Tungsten, steel, niobium, and thermium. So those are all the options that I have for these liquid radiant pipes. And again, the radiant ones, I'm expecting to do much, much better job of encouraging heat transfer. Uh, so we should expect this to change really fast, but I don't know. Maybe sometimes it's not necessarily worth building in them out of refined metals if you can get away with a lot of the same ideas with the regular ones. So let's see what the regular ones do. I'm just going to finish filling up the rest of these. They will all turn on at the same time, and we will see what changes. All right, so I think I got them all. We're going to get down to the gases here at the end. So, yeah. Um, something that might be interesting, which I'm not... I, I guess we can demonstrate here, and that is that uh, liquid definitely exchanges temperatures way faster than gas does because it's so much more dense. Um, I guess just take my word for it, knowing that you can put 10 kilograms of something through here and only one kilogram of something through here. So 10 versus one, like the 10 is going to impart a lot more energy on the things that are surrounding it. So that's kind of the basic idea behind that. But let's see what happens with these pipes. So I'm going to go ahead and reset this counter just because uh, we're going to be consistent. And I'm going to play it for about 10 seconds, which is what we did before with these regular tiles and see how much different it was. The suspense. Oh, I was trying to get it right on 10. I got pretty close. All right, let's see what's changed. So in 10 seconds, they've only pumped a little bit out, but we should already be seeing changes that are pretty dramatic. So like anywhere that's touching these pipes is already heating this up a lot. Uh, so you can see the contents of the pipes definitely does change. 487 when it's coming out, and even within a few tiles, it's already cooled down to 155. So these radiant pipes are ridiculous for exchanging temperatures. As far as the other ones, you can see the pipes getting a little bit warmer, but they haven't started impacting the actual oxygen that much yet. But, you know, I don't know. So let's keep running for a little bit and see what it looks like. Let's at least let a full cycle go before we look at the whole thing. And I'm guessing what we're going to see probably is that the material on these radiant pipes probably doesn't matter that much, uh, considering that's what we saw with the regular tiles. So let's see if that's true with plumbing. All right, there we go. We now have a full loop. They're all emptying back into the chambers that they started from, including the insulated ones. So let's see what we look like. All right, these are all really red, except for a couple of them. Um, the couple of them are the thermium and the aluminum, which we discovered before aluminum is pretty bad at encouraging heat transfer overall. But even still, like this has been how many seconds? And this is already pretty much red entirely. 40 seconds, it's already up there. That's not even like... A quarter of a cycle so yeah you if you want to encourage heat transfer with these or encourage cooling with these or something like that the metal tiles are really good but what's interesting here it's let's see what happens with the other ones so sedimentary rock uh this is already pretty red wow tungsten which this is weird to me um i didn't think that tungsten was an option for this in the regular game but if i were to build this out of this in the debug mode it shows tungsten as an option, as well as wolframite, but I do not think that this is in the regular game. Um, so I guess if you have access to it in the regular game, it looks like with regular piping, tungsten and wolframite are both really good, but that's also because they're metals, so that makes sense. Um, and I guess that they allow this in the debug mode and maybe not in the regular game. I don't think I've ever seen this in the regular game before. So take that for what it's worth. 
Something else that's interesting, though, is Thermium. I'm not sure if you're able to do this with Thermium. I don't think so, because I think that's also a metal. So if you look through the options that I have here for this, I don't think that Tungsten, Wolframite, and tungst or Thermium are options, but everything else I believe is. Uh, so yeah, if you want to encourage heat transfer, it looks like sedimentary rock and obsidian are both doing pretty good jobs of this. It also looks like sandstone is doing an eh job. The rest of them are also kind of in that same category. Ceramic is definitely insulating it. But if you compare that to any of the... Whoa. Oh, that makes sense. If you compare that to any of the insulated pipes down here, you'll notice that for pretty much all of them, they're all still very green. Almost nothing has happened in terms of heat exchange. Except for the same ones that we pointed out that I don't think are buildable this way in the real game, which is Wolframite, Tungsten, and Thermium. So let's just kind of ignore those, but I did want to throw those in there since they're options in the uh, debug mode. So yeah, there you go. So yeah, uh, if you're running, if you're feeling a little cheap or you don't want to spend the refined metal on this, it looks like sedimentary rock or obsidian is pretty decent for ex in encouraging heat transfer. Um, anything else is kind of mediocre, but you should also be aware that if you're using any of this stuff, by the way, insulation once again has not transferred anything because that's exactly what it's supposed to do. Uh, so yeah. Which, I don't know if this is actually true because I feel like the temperature has changed. Yeah, it's changing right now. I'm watching it change. But it says the thermal conductivity is zero, which really confuses me. So I don't understand what it's exchanging heat with, which is part of the reason why this is valuable. So let's keep an eye on this insulation one, because for the insulation tiles, they're still def... <laughs> this is a mess. For the insulation tiles, there's still definitely no heat transfer happening, even though the tiles have changed a little bit, which is weird. Some of them are at 69, some of them are at 68, like on the corners. So does this actually still have heat transfer happening? I don't, it says it should be zero, but I kind of don't get it. I think this is also why simulating things in game is really valuable, because sometimes the assumptions that you can make in practice aren't necessarily correct uh, for whatever reason. So yeah, I don't know what to make of that. All right, let's keep going. So we're checking out these ones. We'll keep an eye on these insulation. But yeah, if you're using the regular pipes, I would just assume that any heat that's in there is eventually going to be transferred. But if you want to it, if you want it to transfer quickly and maybe save on metal, sedimentary rock, obsidian look like your winners there. Maybe granite, but the rest of them are eh, they're kind of middling, so we're kind of ignoring those. Let's check out the other stuff here. These are the insulated pipes for liquid, and as we expected, because tungsten, wolframite, and thermium are not buildable in the real game. Those are metals, they still do have a very high conductivity. So those ones, even though these are quote unquote insulated pipes, are still heating up pretty badly. So it looks like the rest of them, at least for this short period of time, have not made a noticeable change. So again, we're going to have to come back after a long simulation period to see what happens with those. Uh, but yeah, conclusions here, I think if you want to encourage transfer, use any of the metal pipes that you have. Pretty much any of them are fine. If you want to be cheap and not necessarily do it, you can use obsidian or sedimentary rock. The other ones are eh, and we need to keep an eye on our insulation to see what this ultimately does. Because my impressions, if you see something that says zero thermal conductivity, I would assume that that means that it's not going to change the temperature of anything around it. But that might not be true. Alright, so let's look at the rest of this. Let's look at gases now. Um, gases, by the way. Something that's funny here is uh, one of the options to build these radiant gas pipes out of is mercury, which I've never even seen before. But it's funny that it lists here as a solid because if I put it at a room temperature or even anything close, it just melts. So <laughs> mercury is already out of the window if it happens to show up later in the game or something like that. And by the way, the things that show up here, I'm only talking about that because there is a non-zero chance that they will eventually be introduced into the game. I'm guessing a lot of them are deprecated like they were test materials or something like that. So at least for the radiant pipes, um, there's stuff in here like pyrite that I've never even heard of before, but it could exist somewhere. Uh, it could show up back in the game. So just because it is showing up here, I'm going to list it out in case it matters. It probably doesn't, but just in case. So let's find some gases to fill up here. I'm going to fill this up with hydrogen, only because hydrogen is like the most energy rich gas I guess I could I should say I don't really know how to express that because I'm not like a 
a very good person about like scientific terms or whatever, but as far as I can tell, this is going to carry the most energy, which it means it's going to impart its temperature on something else in a more dramatic effect than something else. I think carbon dioxide and chlorine are some of the worst at that, by the way. Um, so let's look at hydrogen and let's go ahead and fill this up with like 15 and we want to make this also pretty hot. So let's do another 500, which we already melted our mercury, but I don't think that we actually build stuff out of lead, but that sounded like a pretty good number before. So let's see what happens with this. And by the way, we already have a good idea of how fast the room changed for uh, radiant pipes for these guys. Uh, for In 40 seconds, we saw the whole room change once we circulated some liquid. Let's see if that does the same thing for the gas, but I can guarantee you that it will not be as fast, only because there is less material traveling through these pipes. All right, let me fill up the rest of these rooms really fast and stop gabbing on about stuff. Gabbing. I feel like... Uh, I'm back in like the 50s with a word like that. I don't know where that came in from my vocabulary, but it apparently surfaced there. All right, we are almost ready. And then we need to fill this up with the same temperature of oxygen. So let's go ahead and grab the same thing we did before. Fill it with oxygen gas at, I think we did two and 80 is the default. So let's go ahead and drop it in there. Not in the mercury, because mercury is already not viable. <laughs> Unless you have like, an insanely cold thing and a lot of mercury that you have access to, but yeah, I don't know about that. All right, almost all filled up. Notice the game chug when it has to update all the tiles that are on the whole map, so yeah. If you're seeing any like weird looking like flashes and stuff, that's definitely the video and not like YouTube or your computer or something like that, because it can look kind of funny. All right, I think we've got them all filled up. I think we got them all set correctly. So now that they all have gas in them, they will start working all at the same time. Let's reset our timer so that we have a good sense of how fast things happen. Which, here we go. Reset. All right. And here we go. Let's do what we did before, and we'll wait about 10 seconds to see how much has changed, which I don't actually know what the time is because I'm a fool. Oh, pff. Hey, how'd you like that? 10.2. Pretty good. All right, let's see how much has changed already, which we saw on the liquid. It changed it like immediately in the ones that actually had stuff in there. So there is hydrogen in here, but if you take a look at the temperatures, the pipes are getting warm, but not necessarily the stuff around them. Again, aluminum actually looks like it's performing a little bit better as a gas pipe, which is kind of weird. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and simulate until it gets us all the way around. And then we'll hopefully be able to see some of the differences between the uh, liquid that he was circulated once and the gas that was. So the gas is getting there, and here we go. It's about where it was. So let's look. And yeah, it's not all the way red everywhere. It uh, has not started imparting in some of these places. Like, some of these places are still kind of cool. Um, this is also niobium, which is interesting. But let's take a look at the differences between these. This has only been, again, I think it should be about 40 seconds if they all transfer at the same rate, which I think they do. Yeah, a little bit under that. So I think the same general principle applies. I would just use whatever materials you have handy here. So I have electrum, which I've never even heard of before. Aluminum, pyrite, again, never heard of it. Copper, iron, gold amalgam, wolframite, steel, niobium, and thermium. Um, niobium and thermium, again, are just these special materials that you're probably never going to see unless you're specifically doing space missions and creating those materials after running space missions. I just don't find a real need for it because, like, once you can travel that far, you're basically done, unless you want to do some silly stuff with the game. So yeah, after that much time, there's not a whole lot of change, but there is some. But I think the important thing to note here is that look how bad it is on some of these, like this aluminum. There's like barely any heat transfer happening as I let this run. Same thing with the uh, regular pipes, by the way. The regular pipes seem like they're doing almost as good of a job, like across the board. What happened here? Oh, the isoresin melted. <laughs> yeah, the, the regular pipes seem like they're almost doing as good of a job. So if you look at, like, the uh, radiant ones, their changes... Like, if I look at this top right corner, because that's what comes in first, probably going to be the hottest in each of these rooms. So, like, 300, 325, 136. Gold amalgam. Wow. Barely does anything. Uh, but again, this has only been a handful of seconds, so it will eventually uh, normalize. If you look at the other ones, too... 131, 138. So, like, some of these are on par with the gold amalgam in terms of encouraging heat transfer. So, I feel like 
If you need to encourage heat transfer via gas, it seems like you don't actually get that much from using these. Which is interesting. Um, I've never actually compared them like this before, so this is interesting to know. Um, again, we have uh, isoresin here, which we don't need to worry about. But again, we have insulation in some of these, and these pipes are changing temperature. We can just sit here and watch them change, which is very strange. So at least for... Let's see what's happening with the tiles, since we have checked, not checked back on those for a little while. Yeah, they're still changing a little bit. Uh, definitely not as insulated as I thought they would be, so... Definitely interesting. Uh, but yeah, so we take a look. Let's just go ahead and pause arbitrarily. After a certain amount of time, let's see how long it's been. After 124 seconds, which is about half a day, you can see that the temperature change for all of the gases for both the metal types and the regular types are the same. Roughly. So, this is interesting. This is something I never knew before. You're almost not necessarily needing to exchange temperature this way. Um, it could be something that matters for certain setups, so I'm definitely going to say that these are better. Like, the radiant gas pipes are better, but they're not, like, blowing me away with how much better they might be. Um, so I don't know. I, I don't really know what to think about that. Might warrant a little bit more testing, but I would say if you're not sure, probably still use the radiant ones. Um, but as far as I can tell, if you're, tr if you're trying to just heat a general area, um, kind of seems like that doesn't matter that much. So... Interesting. Again, the uh, insulated pipes down here have not meaningfully changed. So what I'm going to do is we're going to check all, all of the deliberate insulation, and we're just going to run this for quite a while and see what happens if we run it for quite a long time, which we are on super speed right now, which is a debug command uh, to allow you to speed it up as much as you possibly want to. So let me check really quickly, and if there's not enough interesting change, I'm going to cut, and then I will come back when something interesting changes, and yeah, I'm just not seeing a whole lot of it yet. Uh, there is a little bit happening here. If we check out these uh, sedimentary rock ones, these are starting to heat up pretty quickly, so it looks like those are pretty bad. Uh, okay, yeah, let's take a look at this, actually. So, I'm letting this run pretty aggressively. I'm sending really hot liquids through obsidian and sedimentary rock, and the temperature of those pipes is changing to the point that it's starting to already heat up our oxygen out here pretty significantly. Uh, this is also a really great visualization. I'm so glad I did this because you can see things that are going into the orange, things that are going into the yellow, and things that are not really moving all that much at all. So the good ones here are what I used to think a long time ago before I had my opinion changed. That is that igneous rock, ceramic are awesome. Uh, thermium obviously is terrible because it's not viable. So the red ones I think we can already eliminate because those are not things you can use in the game anyway. But amongst the things you can use, let me just pause here and see what we got. So, obsidian on this bottom middle tile sitting at 111, 113 for sedimentary rock. Uh, igneous rock has barely changed, so that's really encouraging. Uh, granite has changed a decent amount, sandstone has as well, and the ceramic is actually colder than when it started. Only because the temperature of which we build stuff at, usually it's like 68 degrees Fahrenheit. In the debug mode, excuse me. But yeah, I think this is a really great visualization for how these things actually uh, handle it. So it looks like insulation, of course, is going to be the best because that's what it's designed for. Is it just my imagination or did these pipes change temperature again? I swear I saw this rising, or maybe I was looking over here. Yeah, I must have been looking here because look at the temperature on these insulation pipes, by the way. They're already at 200. They are imparting some of their heat on the surroundings, so this is also interesting to check out what's happening with the regular insulation. Slowly rising, so it's definitely not zero, but it's very close. Um, so it looks like there may be some value in using the, like, insulated version of insulation, uh, but the regular one still seems like it does a pretty good job. Uh, if you take a look at some of the other ones, it looks like we're getting some change here. This is probably going to happen the slowest because it's by, like, I think it's convection as opposed to radiation, but I'm probably getting that wrong. So feel free to yell at me if that's the case. But yeah, it looks like we have a good stack rank here. Ceramic looks like it's a little bit better than uh, than igneous rock. Those are the only two that seem super viable. Sandstone is actually a little bit better than I thought it would be, but it's not great. And insulation, once again, is going to be the best if you can manufacture it. Check out gas. 
All right, gas, kind of the same visualization, except for not as dramatic of a change. And this ought to be a good measuring stick here of look how much this has changed and look how much this has changed with the same materials. They're kind of similar, but the, the liquid is definitely going to be more aggressive about changing that. So, yeah, definitely something to note. We should also note that there is very high energy hydrogen in here, which I chose deliberately. The petroleum in here, I think, is going to have a lot worse temperature exchange stats, but even still, it's, it's heating it up uh, more quickly than the other one. But yeah, it looks like kind of the same story here. Igneous rock and ceramic both performing really well. Mafic rocks doing an meh, okay job. Cementary rock and obsidian doing a pretty bad job. Uh, and it looks like sandstone kind of in the middle there. Fossil a little bit in the middle, but I wouldn't spend your fossil on this anyway. Granite kind of in the middle as well. So this is kind of shaping up about how I expected. I love this visualization, by the way. I'm so glad I did this. Because not only am I kind of relearning some of these ideas, but this is a good way to check to see uh, how it's uh, looking overall. And uh, maybe for people that want a quick visualization on what's good and bad, this ought to serve pretty well. Uh, let me run this for a little bit longer on these tiles, since it's apparently not changing as fast as I thought it was going to. Some of these are actually a little bit colder. And because this is going to take the longest, let me actually simulate... Um, and I will run it for a while, and as soon as I start seeing a good visualization on how these things are changing, I'll come back and we'll finish the video. So, I'll be right back. Alright, we're at cycle 11. Um, as far as I can tell, there's not enough meaningful change on all the tiles, but there have been a couple of other changes that we should probably update here. Um, as far as the insulation on the regular tiles, or on the regular pipes, uh, we can definitely see that there is temperature change happening. And this means that you cannot just cheaply get away with only using insulation this way, but note that it's still better than a majority of the other things here. So, regular insulation looks like it's better than pretty much any other material that's not insulation. Uh, so that's definitely something that's interesting that has changed here a little bit. Uh, as far as the differences between the pipes for that are made out of ceramic versus igneous rock, it looks like ceramic's a little bit better, which makes sense, because you have to actually manufacture it. It would be pretty silly if it was the other way around. Uh, so yeah, you can kind of see a little bit of a visualization between these two things. Ceramic is actually doing a markedly better job. Uh, about a 50 degree difference here. Maybe a little bit less than that, but yeah. Pretty, pretty interesting difference between those two, so I would say definitely ceramic if you can get your hands on it. That's one of the reasons to produce it, is to get the insulation that you need from extremely hot liquids. Uh, elsewhere, all these are about as expected. Gas stuff, that is, doesn't count. Same thing with uh, the insulation over here, which interestingly, this has just barely changed it, but I think it eventually will. This should also very heavily demonstrate the difference between uh, insulation on various usages. So like the insulation for liquid, look how red these pipes are. The insulation for gas, not as much. So yeah, definitely very different. Uh, insulation for other things, so we can start to see them separate just a little bit more. Sedimentary rock and obsidian are basically out. Uh, they are not good as insulators. I think we can definitely define that. Mafic rock, I'd say, is also in there. The mediocre ones look like they're sandstone, fossil, and granite. And again, igneous rock and ceramic are the two winners here as well. But you can kind of see the temperature differences between those. 83 versus 94. So definitely a much bigger uh, difference here between these two. Again, demonstrating that ceramic is between the two of them is definitely one of the better ones you'll want to get if you have access to it. But if you don't, Igneous rock looks like it's your your material of choice. All right, the insulation that's happening over here. One thing that's interesting to note here, and this is different than the pipes, is that these tiles are changing as far as I can tell. So like this is at 68 still. This is at 78, but the surrounding room is still perfectly at 80. So I think I'm going to let this run for a lot longer because we need to get some distinction on these insulated tiles. But at least as far as I can tell, the tiles themselves do not impart their heat on anything else. They can take heat, but they don't give it away, which I guess is how you could define it, um, as far as I've seen. But I'll let this run for a lot longer so that we can see the rest of this and we can see all the other insulated tile materials. We're getting some false positives right here because of things that actually shared their temperature with it before uh, they started to heat up. So we are getting some false positives, not really enough to make any sort of determination. So I'm gonna have to run this for a really long time. And I'll come back with the last section talking about which of these materials are going to be the best. But I'm going to guess igneous rock and ceramic. So I'll be back with that in just a sec. All right, my friends. We're at the last section here. We're at cycle 100. 
after running our simulation for this long, which I did in super speed, took, I don't know, maybe a little under an hour to do all that, but yeah, just letting it run and simulate. We got some fraud to expose before we talk about our conclusions and the last little things we saw with the tiles. The fraud is that undeniably the oxygen is changing around these regular insulation tiles. I don't see anything else that's telling me that this is going to happen because thermal conductivity being zero, my expectation on that is that this thing's temperature never changes, but that's not true. Um, so this is definitely sitting up at 117, whereas the starting point was 80. So. Yeah, don't believe these tiles, especially if they're built this way. But if they're built with the regular ones, these have not, or with the actual insulated tiles as opposed to the regular ones, these have not changed whatsoever. So there is some hidden property inside the tile type that they had to kind of fudge, or these numbers are not actually correct, or they're not, like, displaying down far enough. There's got to be some weird thing that they put in there to prevent that from happening. So, yeah, definitely some weird stuff happening there. Also, uh, with the the rest of what we have here, definitely want to show the insulation for the other uh, pipes and stuff. Those are also definitely conducting heat. So here's the gas and here's the liquid. Uh, definitely not. Oh, that's the insulated one. Here's the uh, not insulated one. So non-insulated insulation pipes, which is so confusing. They should have named this something else. Uh, definitely doesn't do what it's kind of advertising. Uh, Definitely some heat exchange happening there. There's also going to be some red herrings in this data, by the way. If you were to take a look at a bunch of other stuff here, um, you could formulate that like, oh, all of this is kind of regulating out to the same temperature. So is there really a reason to choose different materials? And the reason why this is uh, a little bit of flawed logic is because you still will have to cool your base. And it's a matter of how much cooling you will have to expend to offset the, the exchange that's happening here. So just because unregulated, everything looks red now, that doesn't mean that there's no reason to choose one material over the other. Uh, so we'll talk about that a little bit also. And this can also look a little bit weird, but the uh, these chambers have actually achieved uh, a neutral state, which is really weird. I would expect them all to achieve basically the same neutral state, but they didn't. Uh, some of them are dark red and some of them are still in the orange, so that's a little bit confusing also. Uh, definitely some weird stuff about the mechanics in this game, which is why you can't always just trust the math. Sometimes you just gotta simulate it out for yourself. Uh, but yeah, let's take a look at the actual tiles. This is a hundred cycles, and the only ones that have made any noticeable change are sedimentary rock and obsidian, which would not be weird. We've seen that in a lot of other cases as well. But the thing about this is that this has been a hundred cycles, and in the case of most of these, if you look at, and this is also something I'm going to talk about, but if you look at a lot of these, some of the temperatures that are in here on this oxygen is actually lower than what we started with, which means that the initial t uh, temperature from some of these tiles imparted itself onto the uh, oxygen that surrounded it because these were all built at around 68. So we're getting like some odd cooling effect going on here from these tiles and the temperature exchange is just not happening like I expected. Um, like I also mentioned, look at the top of this, it's 85. The bottom is 73, which is... I just don't... I don't understand this. Um, one thing that is interesting is the amount of petroleum that's on these two bottom tiles is basically maximized. And the amount that's on the top is not. It's only at 13 kilograms, which is making the tiles around this much, much hotter. Which tells me that there's either a bug or... There's some funny math going on here. Because I would imagine that the higher volume of petroleum would impart a lot more heat onto these tiles than the lower volume. Uh, that just doesn't really make sense in my brain. So if I'm just totally missing something, let me know here. But this is super weird for me to see. Um, I, uh, yeah, I don't know what to make of that. But the thing that is noteworthy here is that they're all pretty much on the same order of magnitude when it comes to the surrounding temperature of each of these. I'm not seeing any of these that are saying these are clear winners and losers after uh, running for 100 cycles to the point that I would actually recommend building insulated tiles out of different materials. And I know that's going to sound really weird. If you really care that much, uh, the igneous rock and the ceramic are definitely doing way better than some of these other ones if you just look at the tiles themselves. But you have to just look at the rate. So if we looked at the insulation for uh, pipes and stuff like that, if you go back in the video, these were all pretty much ab about red. 
at like cycle, I think it was in the 20s when I checked back. I'd have to note that, but pretty much everything was already in the red by that point. And this is still at cycle 100 and it's barely changed. So as far as tiles, if you really care, I would say Igneous Rock and Ceramic are where you want to go. But for the rest of the tiles, at least in this experiment, I'm not seeing a noteworthy enough difference to say that you should go out of your way to use Igneous Rock or go out of your way to use Ceramic. I think if you have like granite, for example, or sandstone, for example, making insulated tiles out of those seems fine. Um, I don't know. That may be a little bit controversial, so I'm still going to caveat it with if you really care, use igneous rock or ceramic. Um, as far as anything else goes, I don't have a lot of other commentary to make as far as what I've seen. Um, so I'm just going to give a little bit of a quick wrap up on this entire video. So let's do something a little bit fancy that I don't typically do. And that is, let's go through, whoops. Let's go through some conclusions. Uh, conclusion number one is that uh, it, best for encouraging any heat transfer, I'm gonna do this kind of a little bit of a ward style. Uh, use any, any metal or radiant tiles, which all radiant tiles are made out of metal, so I'm just explaining it in both different ways. Or pipes, uh, they've all seemed about the same. Uh, to the point that I don't think there's a real reason to kind of split hairs between those. The second part of this is that uh, sedimentary rock and obsidian are also not terrible, which are regular tiles, which can save you on some precious metals that you might not be able to afford. So if you need to do some cooling, or if you need to do some heating for whatever reason, uh, those are fine also. Uh, the next part is that the best insulator for a tile is literally any insulated tile. I'm going to stick by that and say that, like, if you are having a hard time finding igneous rock, or you're running out of it, or you don't want to make ceramic, then making it out of, like, granite or sandstone or something like that is fine. I'm not seeing enough evidence here to tell me that uh, you should be worrying about splitting hairs, especially over the, the course of 100 cycles. Raising some oxygen that surrounds it by a few degrees is not a big deal. And you should really be saving those materials for your pipes, which is a much bigger deal. Uh, so let's talk about that. Best insulator for pipes, igneous rock or ceramic. And I am leaving off insulation because insulation is just not practical in a majority of your runs. Unless you get to the deep, deep late game and really care that much about it. So speaking of which, uh, most practical insulator because you don't have to manufacture it. I'm going to give that to igneous rock for sure. So if you need to build uh, pipes, especially, and you need to not have any uh, heat transfer, if you can possibly help it, use igneous rock, uh, unless you want to manufacture ceramic. Best overall insulation. This should be pretty obvious. Uh, if you want to ever get to any super deep late game builds where uh, temperature exchange actually matters that much, I would say you can manufacture insulation, but it's very, very, very expensive. Uh, I'm going to do a couple of GoldenEye-esque awards here for those of you that played GoldenEye 007 back on the Nintendo 64. This is the most useless award, Mercury and Isoresin. Uh, Mercury because it literally melted as soon as I placed it. Also, you can't use it in the game anyway. And Isoresin because it has such a terrible melting point. Uh, so, yeah, both of those get my most useless award. And also the most average Joe award which was not an award in GoldenEye, but it probably should have been, in the sense that of like, you didn't do anything really remarkable this game. Good job. Uh, I would just give that to Granite. Granite's also very widely available, um, so that's something you could definitely use. So those are my conclusions. Uh, that's pretty much what I got. Let me know if you guys have any feedback on anything. And I did notice a small mistake earlier in the video, by the way, where I said that I thought that th thermal conductivity implied that it would not share its temperature out with something else. Um, and I was trying to differentiate the two of those. I don't know if that's true in this game. Um, so that might have not been correct, but as far as I can tell, some of their mechanics and some of their displayed numbers aren't really true anyway. So that's about the best I got. Uh, I'll be back with some more tutorials here really soon. I don't have a fancy way of doing this other than just turning these all off and going to something else that's more interesting. Uh, so I'm just going to do this really awkwardly. And maybe we'll go get a shot of Gene here real quick, just to be interesting. But yeah, I'll be back with some more videos here really soon. Please let me know if there's anything in particular you want to see. Um, and I'll see you guys back very soon, like I mentioned. Alright, that's it. That's all I got. Goodbye.